My name is David Gordon with Aspire Fine Homes. Welcome to our video. We've been building luxury custom homes in the Houston area for the past 15 years. And what I've noticed over time is that most of our clients have never built a custom home before. So they don't really know what the process is. So I wanted to put together a quick get it starting video for you guys to watch and get a broad understanding of what you're about to get into. I hope you enjoy the video. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a budget, okay? It's really important that you know this number. And so some people are gonna have 500, 700, a million plus, right? What I would do is I would look at and go, all in with land and construction, here's our budget. I would also talk to a qualified lender. Make sure that you get approved for the loan, make sure you're comfortable with the down payment and comfortable with the monthly note and it works within your budget. Once you establish the budget, then you're gonna look at an area, right? So there's all different areas to in town that you can go build in, but you, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that particular budget is supported by that area. So for example, if I wanna build an $800,000 house, but all the houses sell for around 500,000, that's not a good idea. So you wanna make sure that you're not overbuilding for an area or really underbuilding for an area. So you wanna make sure that that area is going to be able to support that budget. In terms of the area, you're gonna actually, that's gonna be your decision. You're gonna drive around the city, you're gonna look and see where you wanna be, you're gonna talk to neighbors, you're gonna drive the streets. I personally would go to an area and if I knew I had a semi-long commute, I would go there in the morning at 7.30 a.m. from that area and I'd drive to work because I wanna see what the commute's gonna be. Because what you don't wanna do is go build an area and find out you're surprised that the commute was a lot longer than you thought it was. But the area also needs to be able to support your schools, right? Are you looking for the right schools? Are you in a private school? Do you need public schools? So I just think that that's something that's very personal on the area, but you need to make that decision on your own. Lastly in this section is gonna be a lot. This is a very, very personal decision. There's a lot of different factors involved in this. I have built a lot of spec homes over the years, okay? Those are speculative homes where we build without a buyer. And so one of the things we have to do is we have to follow a series of rules, right? So what's really helpful is that you avoid some fatal mistakes, I would call them. So you don't want your lot to ever back up into any kind of commercial, okay? The reason is it really hurts your resale. Plus, you don't know what the people are gonna build behind it. They could tear down these houses and build a high rise and then you have no privacy, right? So another thing is you don't wanna be, like, be across from any type of commercial as well. You also don't wanna be on a busy street. Like you don't wanna be on a major thoroughfare. And some people don't wanna be on a thoroughfare that turns into another street, right? It's good to be on just regular east and west, north and south blocks in that particular area for a lot. Now when it comes to lots, you got to check the deed restrictions. Now, this is something we'll get into a little bit later with the architect, but the deed restrictions are going to tell you kind of how far you have to build the house back and the site setbacks. And those are important because you might find a lot in an area like finding out that you have to build a really small house on it. Okay. But lot is a very, very personal thing. I personally, when checking a lot is if I found a lot I wanted, I would go around and I would knock on the neighbor's doors and talk to people and make sure that, cause you're gonna be putting this house in a, in a neighborhood next to some people you're gonna be next to like your entire life or 20 years or 10 years. So you wanna make sure you check the area out really well. But it also in terms of a lot, you wanna make sure when you do find the lot that you get a builder to walk it with you. Cause he's gonna see some stuff that you don't know like power lines on the property, neighbors encroaching, there's a lot of things like that that's real important. We have a lot review checklist that we'll put down below, and there's a lot of other really good material that we're gonna have below that's gonna help you through this process. Let's go to the next section. This is a really important part of building a custom home, and people, some people are gonna disagree with me, okay? you really need to reject the bid process. Okay, I can't tell you countless stories I've heard of people that follow this process. The process is design the home with the architect, bid the house out, and then build it. Yeah, it's wrought with problems. And here's the main problem, is architects, as much as I love them, don't always know the pricing, okay? So they're gonna be helping you design a house, 
they're also passing out candy, right? They're like, do you want these beams there? Do you want these particular wide floors? Do you want these additional cabinetry? And what they're doing is they're not adding up all the cost. So by the time you design it, you bid it, all your bids are over budget. And what happens a lot of times is people just decide, I'm not gonna build now. I'm frustrated. None of the bids are coming in like I want them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel it. Here's another problem with the bid process is you're gonna get builders that are gonna use cheaper quality products, right? You might spec out in the architectural drawings particular items, but there's so many nuances of different materials that a builder can use to cheapen from level three sheetrock to you know thinner stud walls. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that which you don't know they're actually doing. I mean, here's a good one, door pans. A lot of builders don't put door pans underneath their exterior doors so water can leak in. So you don't wanna go through the bid process because you can get cheaper materials and a cheaper builder. Also, these lower end builders, people that are bidding, are gonna use cheaper traits, right? And so what happens is they're gonna use a contractor for concrete, a framer, some of the big ticket items and use a cheaper framer. And that's the last thing you wanna do is have a cheaper foundation or cheaper framing in your house. I would say the wood floor guys is probably the one of the most important. You wanna talk about a disaster is have a lower end wood flooring guy install the wood in your house, have it not be climatized and have to have it pulled out later on and you move out, right? So that is a real disaster. And this is what the, some of the things that can happen if you bid your house out. Also, it's really hard to compare apples to apples. Contractor A is gonna have their list of stuff in their bid. Contractor B is gonna have their list of items and stuff. But what happens is contractor A might have the cabinetry, the interior doors, pocket frames. Contractor B might just have cabinetry, might just have crown and base. And so you don't really know who has what in each buckets. So their bids aren't compared apples to apples. So it makes it really hard and difficult to choose between these contractors. So I personally am gonna encourage you guys, find a builder early in the process. Find your team early in the process, which we're about to talk about, and then work side by side with them to design to a budget. next part we're going to talk about is determining your style. This is very, very important because before we can get to the next section about picking your team, you're going to need to know what style you're going to do. So styles, there's a ton of different ones. So let's talk about exterior. We can do French country, craftsman, Mediterranean, transitional, traditional. I mean, it's endless. The same thing inside. The inside styles are numerous as well. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you understand which style that you're gonna to wanna to do, right? So there's a couple of really good tools, right? One of the tools is gonna be House. That's spelled H-O-U-Z-Z.com. It's a fantastic tool for being able to look at photos, find photos, search for styles, right? So you'll have your exterior home and the interior home. Now on the exterior, you can pick from a lot of different styles and look at existing photos they have and add it to your library. And what they've done is they created you a way to save stuff for your personal file called an idea book, right? So you'll wanna create an idea book for every area, the exterior of the house and the interior of the house. But in the interior house, you're gonna to wanna to do your game room, your master bath, your living room, your study, and grab photos from the different styles you like, save them into your idea books. But here's another key piece of information. When you save them to your idea book, make sure you write a description of what you like in that photo, because after the hundredth photo, you're not gonna remember what you liked about that photo, and you're gonna go back to it later and go, dang it, what did I like about this photo? So make sure you put that information in there as well. The next tool is gonna to be Pinterest. Wow, I'm sure that most people are using Pinterest already, but it's got all the different photos of everything you like. And what's good about Pinterest is you can pick a photo you like, and it'll have all the different associated photos that will help you as well. So you're gonna pin them to boards. So you have exterior of the houses, interior of the house with the different rooms, and pin the photos you like. These two things are gonna help you very much from picking your team. And they're really gonna help you when we start to do what's called transitioning your style ideas to the interior designer. Now let's talk about selecting a team. This is a very, very critical part of your success of your project, right? And so as I talked about before, some people disagree with me about they wanted to design, bid and build. This is a different type of a structure. This is where you build your team 
ahead of time, and then you design to a budget, which I think is a much more satisfying way to do it, and it gets rid of a lot of potential issues. So let's first talk about a realtor. If you don't have a lot, it would be good for you to hire a realtor to help you find a lot. Okay. These people know the areas, they know them real well. I would look for somebody who I call a farmer, somebody who is in that area, hopefully lives in the area. So they know a lot of off market properties, which we call pocket listings, right? Or they just know neighbors and people that might want to sell, but they know the area really well. They know the nuances of the area. They know what streets are good, what streets are bad, which streets get better value and which ones don't. So realtor would be critical, at least for getting your land. Let's talk about the builder. So you want to go ahead and look in the area or outside of the area and find a builder where you walk through their product, you walk through their house and you just like it, right? You know, you're going to see it and know, I like their style. I like their quality. I like their finish level, right? But you want to meet them and talk to them, right? And so you have to like your builder, right? So that's just a real key part. You know, they can't be where they talk down to you and they can't be where they're hard to connect with. And so when you are finding your builder during this, I call the dating phase or the sales phase, you do want to make sure that they're responding to you quickly, answering your questions, right? And communicating very effectively with you. So the next piece would be architect. It would be great to have an architect that works with the builder, right? That's very good because a builder will have relationships with architects. And if you can use one of their architects, it just makes the process a little bit easier. Okay. And lastly, designer, which is really kind of the jewelry of the house, right? The designer is going to be the person that helps you pick out your finishes, your countertops, your tile, your paint colors, your flooring, right? And you need to go look at their portfolio, look at everything they're done and make sure that it appeals to you. You also need to have a designer that really critically listens to you. Okay. I know a lot of designers. Some of them want to impart their style into the house and not as much the homeowner style. Now that's not the vast majority, but you want to make sure that you pick one that really is going to take your style and your vision and help you express it into your new house. Now that we've talked about selecting the team, let's talk about confirming the budget with the team. So there's really four key components that make up a budget for a house. The first is going to be land. The next is going to be construction services and financing. And we're going to talk about each one of those in detail. First, let's look at land. Land's pretty straightforward. The lot's going to cost what the lot is, right? So you're going to buy it for 200, 300, 400,000. And then you do need to include some closing costs in there in your estimate. So ask the realtor what the typical closing cost on the land would be. Cause a lot of times you are going to have to buy that land ahead of time before you actually close on a construction loan. The second piece is going to be construction. You pick the builder and the builder is going to give you a range. So many dollars per square foot range, high and low, right? $180 a square foot to $200 a square foot, etc. They're going to give you that range, right? You can take that range, multiply it times the size or square footage of your house to figure out what the construction piece is going to be. The next piece is going to be services, right? Services are going to be made up of your architectural fees, right? So you've got the architect for $1.25 a square foot, all the way up to the architect that's going to be $8 a square foot. I think this is one place that you don't skimp, okay? Architects, it's very important that you find somebody who really knows how to draw an exterior elevation with scale and grandeur, but also a very well functional laid out floor plan. That's not wasting square footage, right? And you're going to pay probably in the Houston area between two to $4 a square foot for that person. The not so excited service of your house is probably engineering. This is the person that's going to design your foundation, your framing, all the structural components of your house. Typically the builder or the architect will have an engineer in mind, somebody they've worked with in the past. And I highly recommend this because I love engineers, but the problem is if you get too conservative an engineer, all they're going to do is add structural members and supports that cost you money that you might not need to spend. So you want to make sure you're using one that's recommended by the builder or architect that they've already used before they're familiar with and they understand their pricing. And next is interior designer. This is so important. Interior designers, again, they're the jewelry. They're going to make your house come alive. They're going to take your personal styles and really put them out there. But this particular person is going to give you an estimate on the number of hours, right? They're going to look at your style. 
when you're interviewing them and they're gonna say, hey, this is gonna take you X amount of hours to get what you want, or they might even have packages. If they have a package or a new home package, that's even better, because then you can know it's a dollar per square foot or it's basically a fixed fee. And the last piece of your budget is gonna be financing. So this is the part that people normally don't think about. And so what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to estimate or calculate how much interest you're gonna pay while the construction loan's in place. So as the builder builds and he requests a draw, then that is gonna be funded by the bank and then you're gonna pay interest on that piece, right? And so a couple different ways to look at it is take the total construction loan, multiply it times the interest rate from the bank and cut it in half. That's usually a pretty good way to do it and that needs to be added to your budget because that will be a cost that you pay for during construction. The next piece that's really important is the bid process. So what I'm recommending is following a process where you're designing the house to a budget. In order to do this, you need to coordinate this with the builder and the architect so that you're able to bid the house out or have the builder price the house out at different phases, right? There's typically three phases. So the first phase is gonna be floor plans and elevations. So once you've decided on the floor plan, first and second floor, and the elevations, which is really the front of the house and what it looks like, and the material selection, then he should be able to, the builder should be able to send it out to bid and get some of the key bids back. And you can usually get within 10% of the price based on that first set of budgets. The second time you do a bid or a budget is gonna be at CDs, what we call construction drawings. This is gonna be electrical plan, roof plan, dimensions, really everything to permit the drawing except the engineering, right? And so that would be the next piece. And so they should be able to, at that phase, get within 2% of your budget. The last is engineering. So once the engineering is done, so the foundation is designed, they figure out if there's any steel in the house, what extra uh, structural members are needed, that would be the engineering component. And once those three pieces are done, that third budget, you should be able to know exactly what your budget's gonna be. Now, during this process, the architect or the builder are gonna help put the specifications together. This is important. Specifications are gonna be items that are gonna be budgeted that aren't on the plans. For example, AC system. You're not gonna put a 16 or a 21 SEER AC system on the plans. The specifications will hold that. You're not gonna put six inch wide plank flooring on the plans. The specifications will hold that. Door stylings, where crowns are located, et cetera, might, may or may not be on the plans. So you wanna make sure they're listed in the specifications. And the budgets should include those items and specifications as well. The last item we're gonna talk about are contract types. Okay, there's three different key types of contracts. I'm sure there's more, but let's just cover three. The first one is gonna be cost plus. Okay, the way this works is, it's the cost of the work plus the builder charges a fee, right? Cost plus. And the plus part is typically 15 to 20% is what they charge. Now, the cost plus, there's a couple things I'm really concerned about. Number one is, the builder is just giving an estimate at first. He's not giving a, basically saying not to exceed, right? So he'll give you an estimate, and if there's cost overruns, he just makes money on those overruns. So sometimes he's not motivated to get right on the number and get it perfect, right? The second piece is 90% of all litigation between the homeowner and a builder are all using the cost plus contracts. And those two pieces of information right there just kind of make us hesitate, so we don't do it. We have a lot of friends and a lot of builders are very successful and good builders that do use cost plus. I personally don't. The next is a fixed fee. That means the builder says, it's gonna cost what it costs and I'm just gonna charge you a flat fee. So if there's cost overruns, the fee doesn't go up, the fee doesn't go down. That fee is sometimes 65, 85, 100,000 plus, depending on the size of the project. The last is called a fixed price. That's what we use. I think it's the safest for the homeowner and the safest for the builder. So what this means is we have a very detailed set of plans. We have very detailed specifications, really spells everything out. And we've made all of our selections. So the selections can be budgeted, which is a very important piece, right? And so we're gonna come up with a contract that says this architectural plans with these specifications and these particular um, selection items 
are all gonna add up to one price, and I'm gonna guarantee that price. So if it costs more for the project, we have to pay for it, or if we save a little bit of money, we could keep it. But really at the end of the day, as far as the builder, we're gonna go over on some on items, under some items, and we're just trying to maintain that profit level at the end. I think it's important that whatever contract you get, that it's coming from like a local builders association where it's fill in the blank. That is usually a proven contract. Sometimes when you get a home loan contract from the builder that they've written up over the years, it might not have the protections in place for him or for you that are important. So those are the three basic types of contracts. Again, I told you there's many different types of contracts, but I just wanted to cover what I thought were the most popular ones. I hope this helps. So this concludes our video for getting started with the custom home building process. I really hope this information was helpful for you. So if you look down below, we're gonna have a lot more information to help you. We've got some worksheets, we have some new resources and stuff that should help you getting started in this process. So if you like this particular video, please hit the like, and we'd love for you to subscribe to us. We're gonna have a lot more content coming out. I think it would be very helpful for you. Thank you so much.